pretty much 99% of all workplace bullying is just a bunch of pathological jealousy. For some reason that I will never understand, people have a psychotic compulsion to hurt people they are jealous of. What are workplace bullies jealous of? Anything. Anything they think you have that they think they don't have. Any discernible difference with you they can perceive, they will target. It could be something physical or material like money, possessions, property, or even a relationship. Or it could be something more abstract like intellect, education, knowledge, talent, a particular skill you have, your popularity, the rapport you have with other people, your sense of humor, or just something in your energy and the way you carry yourself, like peace, joy, calm, confidence, strength, or just your spiritual vibration. Again, it could be literally anything, and their pettiness knows no bounds. Ain't enough time in one video to list all the things these people are jealous of. You kind of have to take it on a case-by-case -case basis, but often it's just your physical appearance. This video is for those of you who identify as physically attractive people, and I'm pretty sure from interacting with you that many of you are, shall we say, above average in the looks department, which I know can be hard to own when you're trying to be modest and humble. How do you know you are a physically attractive person? Oh, that would be because literally everyone treats you like complete and total fucking shit absolutely everywhere you go. People hate beautiful people. People have more negative projections about beautiful people than any other demographic in society. Other people's beauty brings out the worst in people. Nothing makes people uglier than other people's beauty, and you can quote me on that. You know you're beautiful because everyone is mean to you. It's like it is physically painful for them to just be decent with you. More than anything, beauty inspires cruelty. People enjoy hurting beautiful people. It's a national pastime. It's blood sport. If you are a beautiful woman, my guess is other women are absolutely horrible. Horrible hateful, cruel, malicious, spiteful, nasty, and mean AF. They go out of their way to hurt you. I never credited abusers with any creativity, but when they wanna hurt you, they can come up with some pretty spectacular stuff, and they absolutely delight in your suffering. If they manage to pull one over on you, you can see them literally smile with self-satisfied smugness and glee. It's like they're having an orgasm. They probably masturbate to it. And some of them hate you even before they meet you. It's like your reputation precedes you. Some women, in addition to being jealous of you, may be sexually attracted to you. And if they're not out of the closet, that's a double whammy because it introduces the shame factor, which is gonna make the abuse particularly vicious. Some women may feign faux friendship with you, but they're secretly jealous and or sexually attracted, which manifests as this running stream of consciousness of passive aggressive insults, ridicule, and unsolicited advice, which is nothing more than a form of control. When people can't be you, they have to control you. They don't really care about you or want to help you. They just want to have an effect on you. Depending on your level of attractiveness, it may be so bad that you feel as though there is not a woman on the face of the planet Earth who can find it within herself to simply be kind to you. I was not able to be friends with other women until I was in my 40s, and at that point, all of my friends were at least 10 years younger than I was. And men are no better. If you are a beautiful woman, men are just as mean to you as other women are. They're sexually frustrated because they can't fuck you. 
ever since Clarence Thomas or so, by now, most men know they can't get away with overt sexual harassment unless they're aging geriatric dinosaurs who are just so freaking old, they don't know any better. So they just get really mean instead. You know that someone is secretly sexually attracted to you because there's a lot of anger attached. And I have a video on that. The only way that men can be decent with you is if they think they have a snowball's chance in hell of fucking you. And when it turns out they don't, they retaliate. Another narcissistic three-year-old spoiled brat who feels entitled to throw a temper tantrum because he's not getting what he wants from you. You may also get a lot of negging. I have a video on that too. It's not an exaggeration for me to say, I don't think I've ever met a straight man who was capable of approaching me without insults. People, especially men, usually insult me the minute that they meet me, sometimes, again, even before they meet me. And even though women are encouraged to be friends with gay men, a lot of gay men may be mean to you too. They don't like women to begin with and they resent the competition. They want to be the hot girl so they don't have to wait for the hot guys to get drunk so they can suck their dicks. And male or female makes no difference. Pretty men get all the same shit pretty women do. If you are a beautiful man, I'm sure other men mistreat you. I don't know if you get the same abuse from women. Are women mean to you because they're sexually frustrated or are they pick me's who throw themselves at you? I really don't know. A pretty face is the ultimate canvas for sick people's projections. It is the perfect target. If you are a physically attractive person, I guarantee you everyone throws a titanic sized boatload of projections in your pretty face the minute that they meet you. Their knee-jerk autopilot assumptions about you are so pervasive and all-consuming, it's going to take a feat of Hercules to get out from underneath them. As long as you have your face, you really don't stand a chance. And trying to prove people wrong is essentially an exercise in futility. They will never forgive you for being beautiful unless they have visual confirmation that they have caused you pain. And you can quote me on that too. Some people don't even give you a chance. It's an automatic no the minute you enter the room. I have had doors slammed in my face before I could even finish the interview. People have chased me out of job interviews because they didn't want the competition for their love interest inside the workplace. Again, I'm not exaggerating. But let's talk specifically about those projections. What do people think about you if you're beautiful? Okay, so the first thing everyone projects onto attractive people is that you have a perfect life. You have absolutely no problems and no pain. You have never known one single day of suffering in your whole entire life, ever. Just because of the way you look, you have never known any hardship because literal minded people with absolutely no empathy and no ability to think abstractly can't see it on your face, which means that you need some. You really need a little suffering because more suffering is definitely what the world needs right now because it doesn't have enough already. Everyone has to suffer just as much as I did for some reason. That's how these people think. And they call me negative. Unfortunately, a lot of people buy into the pretty privileged stereotype that people who are conventionally attractive supposedly have better lives than everyone else. The idea is that because of your looks alone, you get more advantages and opportunities than everybody else. You fly first class, you eat five star, every door automatically opens for you, and everyone rolls out the red carpet and kisses your ass everywhere you go. The paradox of pretty privilege is that literally every ugly person on the planet believes that crap. So the reality is you actually get treated like shit 
absolutely everywhere you go. And it's not just in the workplace, it's everywhere. In the grocery store, in the drugstore, in all the shops, in bars, clubs, and restaurants, at the gym, at the bank, at the post office, at the laundromat, at the dry cleaners, at the gas station, at the car wash, just sitting in traffic or out exercising or taking a walk. Literally everywhere you go. Now, because your life is so perfect and you have absolutely no problems, pain, stress, suffering or hardship of any kind at all whatsoever with anyone or anything, you're lazy. You don't work. People, complete strangers in public who did not know me have literally said that to me verbatim. You don't work or they have implied it. You were born with a silver spoon in your mouth and life hands you everything on a silver platter, not to mix metaphors. You don't have to lift a finger to get anything you want because life is so easy for you, you expect it to be easy, which means that you're entitled. If you have any kind of success at all whatsoever in life, it's not because you worked for it. It was just luck. You're just lucky. If it looks effortless, of course, that automatically means that there never was any effort. It's very important not to underestimate the literal mindedness of people with no empathy and no ability to think abstractly. If they can't see it, it doesn't exist. You're also a snob, a stuck up elitist who thinks she's better than everybody else just because of the way you look. Who do you think you are? You think you're better. You think you're all that and a bag of chips. What, we're not good enough for you? I don't know how many times I have to say it. You need to understand that these are people who live entirely in a world of comparisons and their insecurity knows no bounds. If you look good, People who don't automatically assume that you are judging them and looking down on them for the way they look, when you probably haven't even bothered to notice their existence at all. Apparently, all that beauty has gone to your head. You're getting too big for your britches. You need to be knocked off your high horse, cut down to size, and taken down a notch or two. You need to be humbled. Again, you need some suffering because apparently more suffering in the world is a good thing. You're also full of yourself. You're just all about yourself. It's all about you. You are the proverbial narcissist too transfixed by his reflection in the surface of the water to pay attention to anyone else. You don't care about anyone else. You care only about yourself, specifically your physical appearance. In fact, physicality is all you do. Your whole life is about looking good. The only reason you work at all is to reinvest all of your money back into your physical body. Like very expensive beauty treatments and salon and spa days and pricey gym memberships and designer clothing and jewelry and accessories and handbags and shoes and very expensive cosmetics and beauty products, not to mention probably some plastic surgery. Natural beauty is not really a concept that ugly people can grasp. They don't understand I woke up like this. Let me explain something to you. People who hate themselves believe that everything good in life has to be earned with hard work. If you don't work hard for it, then you don't deserve it at all. Because of their all-consuming self-loathing, they don't really feel worthy of anything good. And that includes love, which is a subject for a whole other video. If you are the kind of person who thinks that you have to chase 
because you have to work hard for love, that means you think that love has to hurt. And I hope you find a good therapist. And the only reason you are beautiful is that you are also rich. Yes, the only way people can look good is by paying a lot of money for it. People have literally said that to me too. If I had a dime for the number of times people have called me quote unquote rich, well, I'd have a lot of dimes. This is some kind of cognitive dissonance that they need to tell themselves to make themselves feel better about how much they hate you because of the way you look. You may get a lot of snarky, passive aggressive comp assaults implying that you spend a lot of money on your physical appearance. Oh, he doesn't have time for us. He has to go to the gym. Must be nice to be able to afford a luxury like that. Shit like that. These people must have failed high school biology because apparently they can't understand genetics. If you're beautiful, you're also promiscuous. You're a slut. You're an F boy or F girl. You a ho for show. You a pump and dump, hit it and quit it. Another stereotype is that beautiful women are apparently easy. I actually had to Google that. Who knew? The idea is that if you can have sex with anyone you want, you automatically do because why not? If there's a piece of chocolate cake on the table in front of you, then stuff your fat face. Why not? This is another projection. If they looked like you, they would be fucking and screwing everything within a 10 mile radius. You also need to understand that narcissists are inherently amoral with no integrity, ethics, morals, or values. They're also emotionally dysregulated and a lot of them use sex to moderate their emotions and they don't really care how they get it celibacy and abstinence, not to mention monogamy, are not really words in their vocabulary. Your presumed promiscuity is why if you are an attractive person, you probably attract the abject scum of the earth. In any environment you are in, scan the workplace, scan the grocery store, scan the gym, pick out the most disgusting, revolting, nauseating specimen. You know, the guy who is always at the gym, who always looks like he never goes to the gym, the guy with hair not only on his back, but also coming out of his ears. You know, that guy, that's the one who makes a beeline over for you, like you're covered in fly tape. Attractive people kind of look like low hanging fruit for pond scum. If you're hot, other hot people probably don't give you the time of day. You're also an attention whore. Everything you do is just for attention. You just want attention. Because attractive people naturally attract a whole bunch of unwanted attention absolutely everywhere they go, of course that automatically means that you want it even if all the attention actually makes you sick to your stomach. Your beauty is deliberate, it is intentional. You are being beautiful on purpose because you want attention. You want to suck all the oxygen out of the room and steal attention away from everybody else because you wanna show people up. You're a show off, you're showing off. And I'm sure you really put it out there. Look at you, twerking like Beyonce with your tig old biddies. Hair done, nails done, everything did. Not me spending my entire adult life padding around in flat shoes, all black, four sizes too big, with my hair pulled back in a bun and no makeup on, desperately trying to make myself invisible in what I call my disappearing act. This is another projection. They would love to get as much attention as you do. Another projection is that you are immature just because of the way you look. Anyone who looks young must be immature. If you have a baby face, 
that automatically means that you're a baby. This is really high level involved logic, rationality, and reason. Great philosophy. These people are really deep thinkers. Actually, it's just shallow, superficial, surface level, literal mindedness, and an appalling lack of empathy, not to mention the complete inability to think critically. As I've mentioned in other videos, when you get the immature gaslighting, when it comes from the same sex, that means you look younger than I do. And when it comes from the opposite sex, that means you are too young for me. They can't fuck you. Apparently, petty name calling is the antidote for unrequited lust. Finally, in addition to being a snobby, lazy, vain, slutty, immature attention hoe with a perfect life, you're also evil. Beauty is equated with evil in this world. And there's a reason for that. That belief system is heavily reinforced by thousands of years of cultural messaging. Every beautiful woman is the proverbial Eve who basically kickstarted the entire downfall of humanity because she was weak. And that's why women are the weaker sex and they just need a big, strong man to tell them what to do. Apparently, feminists just want to be dominated, according to Jordan Peterson. I'm not kidding. There was also Helen, the face that launched a thousand ships. Beautiful women are dangerous. These seductresses, temptresses, sirens and femme fatales who will fuck you up just because they can and they will enjoy it. All beautiful women are automatically mean girls and all beautiful men are Lothario, Don Juan, panty droppers, Mr. Steal Your Girl. People go after beautiful women with a level of ruthlessness that is unparalleled. Angelina Jolie, Amber Heard, Meghan Markle, Amanda Knox. Other women, including my mother, have called me evil and told me that I'm going to hell. And my only response to that statement is, I just think that trivializes the fact that there are so many people who really deserve to go to hell, you know? like Hitler and Stalin and people who wear yoga pants as pants. This is a fear-based response. If you are beautiful, people are afraid of you. Beauty is intimidating. It is perceived as a kind of power because it can influence people. The assumption is that you fully intend to abuse your power in order to hurt other people. I know you have no intention of hurting anyone, with anything you have, but they don't know that. This is another thing you need to understand. People like workplace bullies, people who are unevolved, primitive, low level, low vibrational, 3D and unconscious, really believe that everything good in life can and should be used not for good, but for ill. If they had what you have, they would abuse the shit out of it. They would use physical attractiveness to manipulate and seduce other people's partners just for shits and giggles. So they assume that's what you do. It's another projection. If you are physically attractive, they really believe that is something that you do on purpose in order to make other people feel bad. Before you incarnated, you sat up in heaven and deliberately chose your face precisely because you enjoy making other people feel bad about themselves because that's what they do. It's very important never to underestimate these people's levels of egocentrism. Their egos could not fit inside Yankee Stadium. All while they are accusing you of being all about yourself, it's really all about them. Everything about you is a direct commentary on them. 
For example, if you go to the gym and they don't, they really believe that the only reason you go to the gym is to be better than other people because you want to make them feel bad. Everything you do, no matter what you do, they believe you are only doing it because you want to look down your nose at them. They feel judged by you. They think you are judging them. And they may even tell you that. And that fear of judgment lends itself to this hypersensitive reactivity where even the slightest offhand comment is misinterpreted as a direct insult when you probably weren't even talking about them at all. This is historical programming as well as deeply personal trauma. People who are conventionally attractive represent the popular kids in society, and that is triggering for people who never graduated from high school. They need to believe the cool kids were evil because they never felt accepted by them. I swear there are a lot of emotionally stunted people walking around who in 20, 30, 40 years never healed their high school trauma. Every time they see a pretty face, they flash back to the dumb jock who shoved them against the lockers or the cheerleader who pushed them down the stairs, even if that never actually happened. And they literally spend the rest of their lives with a massive chip on their shoulder about the quarterback or the cheerleading captain who rejected them. They have an ax to grind and they're out for blood. I've said it before and I'll say it again. Workplace bullying is revenge of the nerds. By hurting you, they're trying to heal themselves by taking out their pain on a surrogate. Surrogacy doesn't actually work, but it is a quick fix band-aid that provides temporary relief. It makes them feel better about the Karen or the Becky with the good hair who wouldn't go to prom with them. Because you are so lazy, spoiled, entitled, and apparently you've never worked a day in your life, that also means you are sneaky, manipulative, up to no good, and getting away with something, like the Seven of Swords card in the tarot. You hella sus, you shady AF, because you have a perfect face that automatically means that you're hiding something. You're lying by omission. You have secrets. You use your beauty to cut corners, take shortcuts, and get out of stuff. They can't trust you. You're not trustworthy. Again, literal mindedness. Because they can't see it on your face, that automatically means that it doesn't exist at all, so they have to dig for it. And this is where the stalking comes in. The obsession with beautiful people is psychotic and sickening. So first, they're gonna violate your boundaries with the abusive, aggressive, invasive, violating series of 20 intrusive, inappropriate, and unprofessional personal questions barked in your face with all the class, grace, elegance, and gentle, tender, soft-spoken, mild-manneredness of a military drill sergeant. And it's not because they care about you. They don't give a shit about you. They're just data mining, doing oppo research, and fishing for that one eyelash out of place that proves that you're not as perfect as you look, which makes them feel better about their own insecurities. When they're too cowardly to speak to you directly, they're gonna commit some next level eavesdropping, hanging on your every word, even changing schedules, and moving furniture, the better to eavesdrop on you with. And then they start following you around the workplace, up and down halls and stairs, to and from the kitchen, to and from the bathroom, which is disgusting, and to and from your car. They stalk your social media. In fact, that's the first thing that they do. The minute that they meet you, they all race back to their computers and start crawling all over your social media like the cockroaches that they really are. When they start stalking you outside the workplace, that's when it gets scary. 
They start showing up where they know you go. Bars, clubs, restaurants, places of worship, places where you volunteer, gyms, public parks, and they start driving past your place of residence. The stalking in my life was so bad that members of my own family spied on me when I was going to the bathroom so they could gossip about my bathroom habits. If I were that fucking sick, I would unalive myself. But they really don't see anything wrong with anything that they're doing. It's their entitlement. When you are physically attractive, other people actually believe that your body belongs to them. It's not really your body, it's theirs. You're like a pretty little dolly for them to add to their collection. And they feel perfectly entitled to tell you what you can and cannot do with your own body. They pick at your flaws, yes, because it makes them feel better about their own, but also it's like they're trying to fix them in order to perfect you. It's like you have to be perfect because we can't be. Stalking is the part of the workplace bullying hypocrisy that I actually find amusing. I love how I'm so horrible, but you can't stop staring at me. Ooh, I'm such a horrible person, but you can't just leave me alone, turn around and walk away. I am the worst person who has ever existed in the history of the whole entire world, and yet you can't shut the fuck up and get the fuck out of my fucking face. I'm so snotty and lazy and vain and promiscuous and immature and evil, and everything I do is just for attention, but you can't stop paying attention to me. You can't stop harassing me. In fact, you're so psychotically obsessed with me, you have to abandon your small children on a school night so you can stalk me around a dark city park and you can't stop watching my videos when I never asked you to. Now, if you are a physically attractive person, but you don't prioritize your attractiveness and instead invest your energy in other qualities, that one really boils their blood. The idea is that if you have beauty, you're not allowed to have anything else. Beauty can only exist to the complete exclusion of all other positive qualities. For example, you can't be intelligent. Beauty and intelligence are mutually exclusive. They can't coexist. It's like a law of physics. You may be subjected to some very weird complisalts expressed with a questioning tone of surprise, like, oh my God, you're actually smart or you're actually doing a good job real things that have been said to me if you are beautiful but you're like nope i'm good i'm gonna continue my education and i'm getting some therapy and i'm learning about the world through reading and travel and I'm reading and researching and meditating and praying and exploring my intellectual and spiritual and creative hobbies, interests, and pursuits. If you are not as interested in your own appearance as they are, that's the kicker. That's the one that really gets them. All the girls is shook. They just don't get it. These are shockingly literal-minded people with a very pragmatic, utilitarian outlook on life that everything in life can and should be exploited for personal gain. You're supposed to do something with it and you're not allowed to do anything else. Again, these are 3D people. They're not really interested in evolving. They like the lower levels of Maslow's hierarchy. That's their happy place. Spiritually speaking, these are people who swim in their clothes. It's a low bar. They're also lazy. If they had what you have, they would stop right there. Mission accomplished. It reminds me of an interview Angelina Jolie did with Barbara Walters 
way back in 2003, because I'm that old, I believe it was the first time she spoke out about her humanitarianism. She had just adopted her first child, and she spoke about her life before those changes. And she said, I'm paraphrasing here, I was an actress, I was famous, I had an Oscar, I had money, I had a big, beautiful house in Beverly Hills, and I was in love. She didn't say she was hot, but she is. She said, I had all the things that this society tells you you are supposed to want. And then she said, but I wasn't happy. Well, thousands of people watching that are just sitting there like, well, shit. Why did I spend $60,000 on plastic surgery to look just like you if you're telling me it's not going to make me happy? Why am I working a job that I hate, bullying other people all day to get them out of my way just to make money if it's not going to make me happy? All kinds of people, if they had her looks and her money, would park it by the pool with Mai Tais and boy toys. They would stop right there. They would not lift a finger to do anything else with their life. And she has very publicly been out here in these streets for almost a quarter of a century, reminding everyone that beauty and money are not enough. They are not an end in and of itself. At some point, you're going to have to do something else with your life. And I really think that's the reason people hate her so much. It's do good or derogation. Again, if you have physical beauty, you're really not allowed to have anything else. They can't take away your beauty, so they want to make sure that you never get anything else. Anything else that you have going for you in life, like money or a good relationship or an education or intellect or talent or skill or just a nice car or nice clothes is going to be met with seething, unbridled, jealousy, resentment, and outrage that is so over the top, they might want to tone it down a bit. They really feel entitled to bullying you out of your job because they really believe that you don't deserve to have a job, which means that you don't deserve to have a life. You do not have the right to survive just because you're beautiful. Again, workplace bullying is attempted murder. They are murderers in their hearts. It is jealousy, but it's a little bit more complicated. So just to take it to a deeper level, culturally, people are obsessed with the suffering of beautiful women. They get off on it. There is no better visual to masturbate to than a beautiful woman in pain. It really brings out your eyelashes. Do we really need another book or another movie about Marilyn Monroe or Lady Di. People, leave those dead ladies alone. People need beautiful people to be tragedies. And that's because it validates their ugliness. It means that beauty is too weak to survive in this world. Well, thank God I'm not that beautiful. Finally, if you have physical beauty or really any positive quality at all, people feel entitled to hurt you because, get this, they really believe you stole it from them. You got the good genes in the family and they didn't. These are people who fail to understand not only biology but also metaphysics. This is poverty scarcity consciousness at its finest. They really believe that there is simply not enough of the good stuff to go around and all of life is a tug of war. If you have anything, anything at all, all they know is that they don't have it. This is another thing you really need to understand. Abusers never feel remorse because they feel justified. They feel entitled. In the minds of all abusers, the abuse was provoked. You started it. What did you do that was so bad? You had something that they don't have, which means that you took it away from them. And if all of this sounds batshit mishugana, that's because it is. In conclusion, I will retell a story 
from an episode of This American Life from back in 2019 about a woman who was obese. She wanted two things. She wanted a job, I believe, in the entertainment industry, and she wanted a husband because she wanted to have kids. And she felt like her weight was getting in the way and preventing her from getting what she wanted. At the same time, she thought to herself, it can't just be my weight. It has to be something else. I refuse to live in a world that is that superficial. But she lost the weight anyway. She went to one of those weight loss programs and she got hooked on speed because that's how diet programs work. They get you hooked on uppers so you spend all day cleaning instead of eating. And as soon as she lost the weight, sure enough, she got everything she wanted. She got the jobs that she wanted and she found a husband who later told her that if he had met her when she was heavy, he would not have been interested in her. It turns out it really was all just about her weight. And that episode is entitled, It's a Small World After All. If you think your problem in the workplace is your appearance, guess what? It is. There's a quote often attributed to H.L. Mencken that goes something along the lines of never underestimate the stupidity of the American people. A quote attributed to Claire Hunt is never underestimate the superficiality of workplace bullies. If you're going to objectify me, if you're going to judge me as narcissistic, lazy, vain, immature and an evil bitch because you can't get past my fucking face, well, I get to judge you as superficial, boring, empty, and dumb. As most of you know, I just turned 49 and I really feel I am starting to look my age. I have gray hair and lines in my face and cellulite and a body riddled with scars and I'm at a normal weight Right now I have four layers of foundation and good lighting, but if you met me in person, especially with no makeup, you'd be like, yeah, she looks her age. And I really feel for the first time in my life, I am finally starting to be treated like a human being. In the circles I currently move in, most people I interact with generally respect my boundaries and don't really appear to have any issues with me. I still have to deal with a few bitches and perverts who wolf whistle at me, but nowhere near as much as I used to. Over the past 30 plus years, I worked so hard to force other people to stop hurting me that it damn near killed me. I did everything I could not for lack of trying. I get an A for effort. I played every role and every character and wore every costume in the wardrobe. What a crying shame that in order to be treated like a human being, all I ever had to do was just look like shit. I hope that helps. Take care.